Good morning. Good morning. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. It is a beautiful Lord's Day, and we can excite at being together in His presence. Just a few announcements I want to make. Um, first of all, please note that the Member Care Committee is working on trying to put together a new pictorial church directory for our church, uh, trying to work on it in such a fashion that... Uh, it will not come as an expense to the church. There's not going to be any uh, photographer uh, companies here trying to sell you family portraits. So uh, for that, we're very thankful for the member care committee. What we are needing, though, is for you to make time to get your pictures made. Uh, the member care committee will be uh, taking pictures each Sunday during the month of March before and after morning worship and we encourage you to make arrangements to do that. Now, as I make that statement, allow me to also add the uh, Sarah's going to be here this afternoon taking pictures of each of the committees as they gather for their committee meeting so we can have a committee page within that directory. We want to encourage you, if at all possible, to be here today for each of the ministry team that you serve. And if you're not currently serving on a ministry team, today would be a great opportunity to get you involved and help you be a part of that uh, uh, that process. Also note that Tuesday is our ladies' night. Thank you, Nicole, for leading us. How many do you have registered? 24 ladies. Isn't that awesome? It looks for a great night in the Lord. Don't forget Wednesday night. We're back at our, our Wednesday night events, especially with our kids' choir working on their special Palm Sunday presentation. Are there other announcements that need to be made? Your kiddo comes on Wednesday night, or even if they don't come on Wednesday night, we'd love for them to join us for the, the musical Because He Lives. They each have a DVD, and if you would encourage them to watch that at home, because if they are listening to that and watching that, it really helps escalate learning words. So if you would help me with that, I really would appreciate it. And if they need a DVD, let me know and I'll get one to you. Thank you. Any other announcements? Uh, well, then there is a visitor on the very, very back row. If everybody would turn around and say hello to our visitor and make them feel welcome. <laughs> it is so good to be in the house of the Lord. At this time, let me invite you to prepare your hearts. Prepare your minds, and together may we enter the very holy of holies. May we enter into the very presence of our God. Brothers and sisters, let us worship God. Grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me, 
There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Let's stand together as we join our voices out at Calvary. scripture this morning comes from Zechariah 9, 9. It says, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Will you pray with me? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for another opportunity that you have given us just to be in your house to worship you. But most of all, another opportunity for anyone that does not know you, that this will be their day to accept you as their personal Savior. Father, I just pray that you be with each and every one of us here that, uh, and those who are not here cannot be here. Father, we just pray that you will just uh, guide and direct us, open our hearts that we may receive and our eyes that we may see. For we ask these things in your wonderful name. Amen. He did as the children come down to meet with Miss Tammy for the children's sermon. Come on down, kiddos. There's some other visitors I bet Brother Tim didn't see. But over here, Becca and Nathan are back too. So it really is a day for visitors to be in the church. We're so glad to see those faces that we haven't seen for, it seems like, probably years. Good morning. Oh, my gosh. I forgot something. I told you. You're right. You did, Tatum. Tatum tried to talk, tell me. When you teach Sunday school, and then, I don't know how Miss Gretchen's been doing it. When you teach Sunday school and children's sermon, it is tough. I'm telling you. It is tough. We're, we're, how much longer, Miss Gretchen, can we last? How much longer? 
Now I'm ready. Are you ready? Now I'm ready. Oh, man, I wore my green. I made Mr. Bun wear green, which green he can't even see. What are we getting ready? Why are we getting ready to wear green? St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day, Myers, that's right. And did you know that St. Patrick was a real person? He was. Do you know, do you know about him? Have you been learning about him? Yeah. Well, he is. He's a real person, and he brought Christianity to Ireland. Pretty cool. So that's why we celebrate St. Patrick's Day. And I looked all over for a picture. He was born after Christ um, went to heaven and died on the cross and went to heaven. He, was, he lived in the 300 and what was it, 48, something like that. And so Mr. Bunn and I searched and searched the entire internet, which you know that's the magic box that brings us all the answers. We searched and searched, and there's not a picture of him. But the real secret is, he's really not a saint. Somebody laughed back there. They must have known that. He wasn't ever canonized, which means he wasn't ever officially recognized in the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church in Ireland, Christianity wasn't even there. You know how Jesus was born in... in um, Bethlehem, and I told you my brain is just gone from all the stuff I did taught this morning. He was born, and remember, he died in a country far from where Ireland is. And so St. Patrick brought Cain and brought Christianity and taught people about Christ and about God. And so if it wasn't, if it wasn't for St. Patrick, he, we would, they wouldn't have known about God in Ireland because then they didn't have telephones and televisions and things like that to watch. But there's the coolest prayer. Because I, do you think about St. Patrick's Day as mostly having like leprechauns? Tate Neely calls them the leaf, the leaf man, the leaf man. Because I don't know really what they are. We haven't seen them. And that's we part of, I know, they're, and they're sneaky. I know, I've seen, it, I've seen parts of him. And he's left his gold around for Mimi to find, too. He has. But, but he took you. It was chocolate. It was chocolate. He didn't leave the real stuff, did he? Well, th my favorite blessing is, and this came from Ireland. This is one that they like to say. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm up, warm up on your face. And the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Isn't that a neat blessing? The road rise to meet you means, oh, he, that we hope you have an easy journey in life. The wind in this prayer is supposed to remind us of God's breath and God's spirit that stays in us, our Holy Spirit. Breathe in and breathe. And the sun shine up on your face. Don't you feel so much better when that sun is out? Neely, your turn to listen. Thank you. You know how sometimes we go outside, and like yesterday, oh my gosh, you looked and you would see the sun, and you'd think, it's so warm. Was it warm? No. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And the rain falls softly. Okay. In Owensboro, we've seen rain fall really, really hard, haven't we? But when it falls softly on the ground, that's how the plants can absorb them and the vegetables and the fruit trees can grow. And so that way, if it falls softly on the ground, that's so that you can be, they can, the plants can still grow. So that's like God providing good things for us. And this is my favorite part at the end. And may God hold you. Well, how can he hold you and you and you and you and you and you and all these people in the palm of his hand? He has very big hands. He's not short, not short-handed, is he, Tatum? He has very big hands. We can't even imagine until we get to go to heaven to see him. He Does he hold all of us in our hand? He holds all of us, Neely, all of us. So remember when you're celebrating St. Patrick's Day and you're having a really good time, think about it really is about 
bringing Christianity to Ireland. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, may we always have a journey that is with you. May we, we realize that you never let go of us, no matter whether there's hills to climb, mountains to climb, or even out in outer space to climb. May we always feel that you hold us in the palm of your hand. May we always feel that sunshine on us and feel warm and cozy. And we, may we always have a gentle wind and rain that helps our journey, to help us to remember that you provide for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. Happy St. Patrick's Day, thir for Thursday or Friday. Can't Thank you, Miss Tammy. We feel the presence of the Lord when we think about the cross, that he went to the cross and he died and uh, so that we would have everlasting life. So let us stand together this morning and sing the old rugged cross. something a little bit different this morning as we come to our time of community prayer. Uh, when we were in youth groups 
we used to do popcorn prayers, right? You just pop out something, right? So here's what I'm going to invite you to do. I want you to name, one at a time, just pop it out, the prayer on your heart. It can be as simple as John and Melissa Lear. And as a congregation, we're going to respond, he's got really big hands. So share your popcorn prayer big and loud so everybody can hear it. And after each, after each prayer request, we're going to say, he's got really big hands. Can you pray with me this morning as we lift up the prayers of this community and of our heart? Will you begin? He's got really big hands. 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 Don't don't wait out on me now. He's got really big hands. 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 Can we add the Catcher and Kyle family? He's got really big hands. Come on, anyone else? He's got really big hands. And can we add our ministry teams and our our committee meetings? Our country, he's got really big hands. Anyone else? I don't want to leave you out. He's got really big hands. He's got really big hands. He's got really big hands. Anyone else? He's got really big hands. Father, today, we're so thankful for your really big hands. The hands that long to reach out and cradle us under your protective wings. And we're so thankful in those really big hands are the scars that bled and died that we might live. We thank you, Lord, because in you our fears are defeated. Our doubts are removed, and our defeats are transformed into victories because you are our God. We praise you in the name of Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen and amen.
Father, thank you for all that you've given us. Please continue to be with us and guide us in all that we do. In your name we pray. Amen.
Candy, I'm sure, right in the middle of that song, Leon leaned over and said, wonder what the name of that is. <laughs> this morning, I invite you to take your Bibles and turn with me to the Gospel according to Luke. There in the 13th chapter... Uh, we will find our text for the morning, Luke chapter 13, beginning with verse 31 and concluding with the end of the chapter. Uh, as you find your passage, uh, I invite those who are able to stand in reverence to the Holy Word of God. Luke writes, The same day there came certain of the Pharisees, saying unto Jesus, You better get out of town, because Herod's going to kill you. And he said to them, You go back and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto you, how often I would have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, but you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, and truly I say unto you, you shall not see me until the time come when you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of of the Lord. Will you join me as we ask the Lord's blessing upon the written holy word of God. Father, in this moment, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth that it reveals. And now, Lord, we ask you that you would prepare our hearts that we might be receptive of what you would have us to hear and what you would have us to know. Father, as we gather, there are those who are gathered here this morning that need to be wrapped in the arms of your comfort. Father, would you speak to us words of comfort? Father, there are those who are gathered here this morning that are battling with thoughts of uh, doubt and defeat. Would you encourage us by the power of your Holy Spirit? Father, there are those here this morning that are struggling with sin and temptation. Would you convict us of where we've fallen short and draw us back into your presence? And then as David has already prayed this morning, Lord, there are those here who know you not as Lord and Savior. And the greatest desire that we could ever know is that this would be the day of your salvation for your glory and the growth of your kingdom. Father, we are your people. Have your way in us. For your glory and your glory alone we seek. And all the God's people said, you may be seated. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. In anticipation and preparation of the Easter celebration, Lent invites the church to revisit the gospel story from the wilderness to the cross. And as we reflect upon the, 
sacrifice Jesus willingly gave, the purchase price of our salvation, we are encouraged to seek opportunities to grow in our relationship uh, in the Lord by the in giving of ourselves in intentional acts of worship, Bible study, and Christian service. As we invite God in, the intent would be that our spirits would be renewed and we would experience then something of a spiritual spring. For this purpose, um, many people embrace the practice of giving up something during these 40 days. Usually trivial things, some not so trivial. But either way, the, the, the intent is to challenge the penitent heart to reflect upon the magnitude of God's love in such a way that each time we are tempted to compromise, we would be drawn closer to the cross of Calvary, the love of Christ. And remember, Jesus paid a debt he did not owe because we owed a debt we could not pay. That's the season of Lent. Okay? A few years back, Teresa and I were out celebrating our anniversary dinner and seated just one table over was a group of ladies who appeared to be out just celebrating life and friendship. Amidst all the laughter, I, I couldn't help but overhear one voice who said, Oh no, I, I can't order that. I gave up chocolate for, for, for Lent. Another voice said, Not me. I gave up sodas. And the entire table erupted with laughter. From there, apparently, they went around the table, each lady acknowledging a Lenten sacrifice when at last... One final voice said, who, me? I think I'm just giving up. And again, the table erupted with laughter. The ladies may have been laughing, but personally, I couldn't shake that thought. Ever felt like that? Ever felt like just giving up? When the issues of the workplace seem overwhelming, when the strain of your finances appear beyond your ability to juggle, when marriage becomes a struggle or relationships within the family start to crumble, when issues of life, health, and death hit far too close to home, when the car won't start again, when your try is tiring and your hope is exhausted. Ever felt like just giving up? That's our text for the morning. Apparently, certain of the Pharisees hear of the plot and they run to warn Jesus, you better give up, they say. Herod's going to kill you. If you want to save your life, you better get out of town and fast. That's our text. And considering Herod's reputation, this was no trivial warning. Just ask John. You might remember as little more than just a party favor, Herod ordered the baptizer's head delivered on a platter. Make no mistake, Herod was a very dangerous man. And this was no threat to be taken lightly. So how does Jesus respond? Look at the text again. If you still have your Bibles open, watch what Jesus says. He, he, he tells the guys, he says, you go back and tell that fox, I'm going to finish what I came to do. 
And in case we are uncertain of what Jesus had in mind, Luke spells it out for us. Again, watch the text. Jesus says, I will cast out devils and I will do cures until I am finished. And then I will travel to Jerusalem for it cannot be that a prophet perish outside the holy city. Did you catch it? Many don't. Many don't. See, Jesus is talking about the cross. He's talking about fulfilling prophecy. That's why the Zechariah 9-9 text this morning, you might remember that as the Palm Sunday proclamation. Rejoice, O Jerusalem, because the King comes to you just and having salvation. The point is, I think sometimes we lose meaning when we fail to realize articles like A and V are actually English trans- uh, additions inserted into the text to uh, uh, complete our translations. Think about it just for a moment. A prophet, or just any prophet, could and did perish from anywhere, right? Right? Records throughout the Word of God. They happen everywhere. That leaves Jesus' response somewhat meaningless. That's why I want to suggest this morning a more accurate translation might read, The Prophet. The Prophet. Now that changes everything, right? So what's Jesus saying? He's saying the promised Messiah of God must travel to Jerusalem to fulfill prophecy. He's saying he's saying Herod may be king. He's saying Herod's threats may be serious. Jesus even acknowledges Herod may be a sly fox and a hindrance to his mission. But earthly agendas can never eternally defeat the promises of our God. Second, notice Jesus begins the description of his mission with the casting out of devils. I think that's really important as it reconnects us to last week's text. Think about it. Considering the fact that Jesus has already defeated the king of demons in the wilderness, Jesus is saying this present fox, this little devil might pose a threat, but he's certainly no reason to divert from God's redemptive plan. So here in Jesus' response, what I invite you to see this morning is a simultaneous refusal to give up coupled with an unrelenting willingness to give all as the prophet as the messiah of god jesus would not could not be diverted from jerusalem and the mission of the cross or let me try it this way jesus refused to give up determined to give all in order that we you and i might gain all pretty neat right Jesus refused to give up, determined to give all in order that we might gain all. See, that's the Lenten story. And that got me to thinking. If the first lesson of Lent is to remember all Jesus willingly gave for the price of our salvation, maybe... The second is to remember his refusal to give up. If the first lesson is to remember Jesus gave all, maybe the second lesson is to remember his refusal to give up. If I'm correct, then would it not be equally appropriate during this Lenten season to re- commit to Jesus our refusal to give up. Our refusal to give up on life. 
our refusal to give up on our spouse, our family, our refusal to be defeated by the obstacles or temptations cast in our direction, our refusal to give up on our church and one another. Considering all Jesus endured because he refused to give up on you and for you, what present obstacle or temptation are you willing to commit or recommit to overcome during this season of Lent for the sake of the Christ? You see where I'm going with this? Here in this text, Jesus is threatened with certain defeat. The king, the government, if you will, want to silence the church. The king perceives himself to be large and in charge, and there's just no place in his world for a voice of higher authority. Sound familiar? Remember, we have said to acknowledge Jesus as king first requires admitting I am not. And let's just say Herod was not the first or the last unwilling to anoint Jesus Lord and king. Still, in the face of adversity, Jesus stood firm and never, ever lost sight of his mission. Jesus understood anything worth doing in life is rarely accomplished without overcoming obstacles along the way. As our example, Jesus held tight to one basic truth. God is still God and God is still in control. It is this one truth that keeps Jesus pressing toward Jerusalem. Knowing full well when he arrives, the cross will be waiting. Allow me to show you another interesting discovery from this text. Included in this determined refusal to give up, you will find two very distinct references to a third day. Jesus said, today, tomorrow, and the third day, and today, tomorrow, and the day following. There is no question the literary intent is to draw our thoughts to the Easter event and the three days in the tomb. In the eyes of the world, the ultimate defeat, right? However, As Easter people, we know the Easter message is not one of defeat, but one of victory. It is Jesus who reminds us here that on the third day, he would be perfected. That is to say, on the third day, his mission would be complete. This word perfected brings to mind the words of our Savior while still on the cross. John 19.30 records Jesus breathing his last while crying out, It is finished. Now, both verbs, perfected and finished, are translated from the same Greek word, telio. Telio, meaning to finish, to fulfill, to make whole or perfect. The lesson here, I believe, suggests regardless of the adversity that you and I encounter along life's journey, we must not, we cannot lose sight of our mission and our purpose in Christ Jesus. For Jesus, his mission and purpose was clear. His mission was Jerusalem. His purpose was you. Understand, the journey to Jerusalem was not an attempt to escape Herod's threats. Remember, the journey to the cross was to purposely pay a debt he did not owe 
because we owed a debt we could not pay. That's the mission of Jesus. One, I am very thankful he determined to never, ever, ever give up. What are you saying, preacher? I, I, I'm saying when faced with adversity, maybe we need to allow Jesus to be our example. We, like Jesus, must stay the course. In this life, there will always be obstacles. Obstacles intended to divert us from our true mission in life, which is simply learning, growing, and becoming in Christ Jesus. And while the diversions may differ in each and every life, understand this, the intent of the fox is always the same, to place within us this defeated mentality encouraging us to give up, to throw in the towel, to turn and run the other way. Remember, we said last week, the voice of the enemy is fear, doubt, and defeat. And yet, the example of Jesus is clear. The difference between defeat and victory is often no more than a refusal to give up. Or, in the now infamous words of Coach Gio Valvano, Never give up. Failure and rejection are only the first steps to success. In my second year of seminary, to stay on schedule, I was forced to take a class uh, on the confessions of the church taught by none other than Dean McKim. Now, that name may not mean anything to most of you, but I assure you, some 30 years later, that name alone still causes trembles and fear. On the first day of the class, a synopsis of the course was given, and along with guidelines and expectations for successful completion, and as I listened carefully, the voice of doubt invaded my very being. Instantly, I knew I was out of my league. I was defeated. I was without hope. And I, I realized dropping the class would at minimum require an a, additional semester uh, for completion if possibly causing never to complete graduation at all. Nonetheless, after class that day, I sheepishly walked toward the desk. My head hung low, afraid and full of shame. I, op I purposely suggested the wisest course of action for me at that time was to simply drop the course. Dr. McKim never looked up from his desk, but he simply said, Tim, 90% of life is showing up. Instantly, my perspective changed. Suddenly, victory was in my reach. Admittedly, it did prove to be the hardest class I would ever survive. I have never in my life worked so hard to understand so little. But I didn't give up. Day after grueling day, I showed up, and eventually, you know what? The semester ended. Admittedly, it was far from the best grade I, grade I ever received. But I can tell you this. I've never been more proud of any accomplishment I ever achieved. Compare that to the obstacles that Jesus faced for us. I can't. 
It doesn't begin. But during this Lenten season, as we sacrifice trivial comforts of life, may we be reminded of the immense sacrifice Jesus made for us. And as we prayerfully read and reread, may we again be reminded all Jesus willingly endured, refusing to never, ever give up on us and for us. And as we do, may the obstacles of this life appear just a bit smaller, stirring within us a renewed determination to never, ever, ever give up. For his sake. For his sake. How about you? That's our text for the morning. What's the enemy hitting you with? What's the enemy telling you you're not good enough to do? That you are not smart enough to accomplish? That you can't go there because you don't fit in or you don't belong? What's the enemy whispering in your voice keeping you from being all God desires you to be? This is your opportunity. This is your opportunity to tell that fox. He may be real. His threats may be serious. But our Father... Is greater than all. This morning, as we prepare to close, as we sing our hymn of invitation, as the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart, what do you need to leave at this altar, to leave this morning victorious and complete? That's your invitation. What are we singing, Jane? Need it all. Let us stand. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson Fellowship Hall, taking pictures, following morning worship service. If you are ready for your family portrait, uh, starting to get those completed would be a big help, right? Uh, Don't forget, today we're doing uh, pictures for uh, committees. 
So if you could possibly be here and participate with the committee meetings today, we would greatly appreciate your presence. Any other word? Somebody turn around and look at Doc and tell him happy birthday. Acolytes, I'm waiting on you. Word on any other heart. <laughs> you know, Wednesday night we had a wonderful Bible study. And I saw something in the Word of God that I had never seen before. In our Discover verse, it simply said, When they will bless you, I will bless you. The point being, the pastor's blessing is more than just a dismissal from worship service. But if you will receive the blessing, God will complete the blessing by pouring the blessing out upon your life. So will you hear the blessing this morning? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, leading us into the world where we can represent Him in love, sharing His goodness with all that we meet. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen and amen.